Okay, so let's prove that this language is not a, uh, it's not regular. So it's the set of all strings that are not palindromes, okay? So as an example, um, A, B, B, A, that is a palindrome, so it's not in L. But if I take away one of those characters, let's say that one, then it is uh, in the language L here. So whenever you have a question to show something that's not regular, where it says is not something, a good technique is something called the P factorial trick. You can search it on YouTube if you wanted to. I made a video on it. Thank you very much. Um, but I'm going to reintroduce it here. So let's try to prove that this thing is not regular. So let's suppose L were regular. Then there exists a pumping constant P for L. So there exists some constant P for this language L. So then now we got to pick a string that is in the language and length at least P. So let's choose w equal to well we got to pick something that's not a palindrome and we want to arrive something at something that is a palindrome which is kind of hard because the things that you're going to be pumping can have a lot of different lengths you want to make sure that you can always eventually arrive at a palindrome which is kind of hard if you think about it so what we're going to do here is this well actually i should say abb is not in there uh I meant uh, 0, 1, 1. That's in there. Okay. So let's pick, let's say, 0 to the P, 1. I'd like to do 1, 0, and I got to have some number other than P here. Because if I put P here, then it's going to be a palindrome. I want something in the language to start with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick P plus P factorial. So this is something called the P factorial trick. The reason is that no matter what you pump over here, P factorial is a multiple of the length of whatever you pumped over here. And we'll make that more precise later. Okay, so let's look at all decompositions. So look at all decompositions of W into X, Y, and Z according to the rules. So x is going to be some number of zeros in this case. y is going to be some number of zeros in this case, also because the first p characters are zero, and that's one of the rules. And z is going to be the whole rest of the string. So p minus alpha minus beta, that's the amount left. The two ones in the middle, and then zero to the p plus p factorial. I should check first. Well, this is clearly a length at least p, and is not a palindrome because p, fact, p plus p factorial is strictly more than, than p. So it's not in the language. So, that, so, so it is in the language, I should say. It is in L. It's not a palindrome. It is in the language. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to choose an i, an i, such that x, y to the i, z is not in L. In other words, x, y to the i, z is a palindrome, okay? Because that's what it means to not be in the language. Okay, so let's actually compute what this what this string is. So x, y to the i, z, that's gonna be zero to the p plus i minus one beta, the two ones in the middle, and then zero to the p plus p factorial. The one ones in the middle are preventing the zeros from being squeezed together, and it, that means it already is a palindrome. So the one ones are kind of useful. Um, you could have done with a, a single one instead of two. I just happened to do two here. But um, okay, so this what does it mean to be in the language? So it's in the language means it's not a palindrome if and only if the two runs of zeros are different because the one ones aren't really contributing anything to whether this thing is a palindrome or not. Um, so if and only if P plus I minus one times beta is not equal to P plus P factorial, okay? So this is if and only if, if you subtract P from both sides is I minus one times beta is not equal to P factorial. So that means if and only if i is, e is not equal to p factorial over beta plus one. 
And it's important to note that this quantity right here is an integer. And why is it an integer? Because uh, beta is between one and P. So P factorial divides, oh, sorry, beta divides P factorial no matter what it is because it's between one and P. And plus one obviously doesn't change whether it's an integer. So let's choose I equal to be that number. So let's choose I equal to P factorial over beta plus one. And that allows us to have it be a palindrome now. So because this thing is an integer, that allows us to escape the language, the clutches of the language, and arrive at something that is a palindrome, but just barely, because you have this exactly one value of i that works. It just barely holds on, but eventually allows us to, to get in there. So that's pretty cool. So this was an application of the P factorial trick to show that this language of non-palindromes is not regular.